नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय चैत्यानम काल कलयतामहम मृगाण च मृगेन्द्रोहम वायनतेय पक्षिण Among the Gaitya demons, I am the devoted Prahalad. Among Sadhguas, I am Tang. Among beasts, I am the lion. And among birds, I am Garuda. Purport, Diti and the Diti are two sisters. The sons of Diti are called Adityas. And the sons of Diti are called Gaityas. All the Adityas are devotees of the Lord. And all the Gaityas are Adityas. atheistic although prahlad was born in the family of the daityas he was a great devotee from his childhood because of his devotional service and godly nature he is considered to be a representative of krishna there are many subjoin principles but time wears down all things in the material universe and so represents krishna of the many animals the lion is the most powerful and ferocious and of the million varieties of bird garuda the bearer of lord vishnu is the greatest tomorrow is the shingha chaturdashi the celebration of the appearance of bhagavan nrsingha deva so just as nrsingha deva is famous palad is famous in some ways we can say palad is greater than nrsingha Even though Indra Singh is the Supreme Personality of Godhead, and Pallad is his devotee, Pallad is the servant. When the Singh Dev offered Pallad benediction, Pallad said to the Singh Dev, "I only want to be your servant." Yet, in some ways, the devotee is greater than Bhagawan, because Bhagawan came. For the sake of Pallad, he, he came to serve Pallad by personally removing the obstacles to his devotional life. Who were the obstacles to Pallad's devotional life was personified as his father Hiranyakashipu. So we should tell him to phone later. Well, go and take a phone call somewhere else. So Bhagawan. we have to understand in relationship to his devotee there is one concept of the absolute truth as impersonal nirvishesh without variety but the vaishnava understanding is the supreme personality of god so if he's a person I mean, he is a person with other people. Person means he has feelings, desires, likes, dislikes, relationships. So the absolute truth, as understood by the Vaishnavas, that is concerned with the dealings of the Lord. with his devotees and especially in bhagavatam we are reading about bhagavan and the bhagavatas there are two kinds of bhagavat ek bhagavat bolo bhagavat shastra aur bhagavat bhakta bhakti rasa patra chaitanya charitamrita describes there are two kinds of bhagavat just leave it Leave it, leave it. The Chandra Charitamrita describes there are two kinds of Bhagavat. One is the book Bhagavat, and another is the person. Bhagavat means that which is in relationship to Bhagavan. Everything is in relationship to Bhagavan. 
That's why here we see this chapter, this is Vibhuti Yoga. Krishna is describing how you can see Him, Krishna, in everything, represented through His opulences. But some things, they have very specific direct relationship with Krishna, just like everything is related with Krishna, you can say even the, even the stool, that's also connected with Krishna. It's also produced from Krishna's energy. In Bhagavatam we find that dharma is produced from Krishna's front side and adharma is produced from his back side. So even the bad qualities, they are a perverted reflection of the good qualities in the spiritual world. Ultimately everything comes from Krishna. But that which is very directly connected that is called Tadiya, that which is very closely connected with Krishna. So the Bhagavatam, that is very closely connected, means the Bhagavatam, that is non-different from Krishna, the Bhagavatam is Krishna in literary form. And the devotee also, the Bhagavatam is considered as good as Krishna because you can perceive those who study the Bhagavatam under the guidance of the Bhagavata, they can perceive Krishna in the Bhagavatam. So devotee, a great devotee, you can also get Krishna from the devotee. Just like from Bhagavatam you can get Krishna, from devotee you can get Krishna Shri Pramar, Krishna Dite Taro, Pramara Sakapiyache, Amito Kangal, Krishna Krishna Goli Dhai Tava Pache Pache Bhakti Nau Thakur Singh that the great Vaishnav he has Krishna Krishna is his property he can give you Krishna therefore we should chase after the Vaishnav asking please give me Krishna so with tomorrow we are celebrating Mrishinga Chaturdashi but there is no celebration without considering Prahlad when we think of Mrishinga Deva, we must think of Prahlad. And when we think of Prahlad, we must think of Mrishinga. Our movement is called Krishna Consciousness. So when we become conscious of Krishna, we don't only become conscious of Krishna, we become conscious of everything in relationship to Krishna, and especially Krishna's devotees. Why uh, Krishna, he is enjoying his pastimes, but Krishna enjoys his pastimes with his devotees. See, if Krishna just, for instance, Krishna goes and plays in the Vrindavan forest. But if there are no cows and there are no cowherd boys, then where's the fun? Even anything, if you want to enjoy, you can enjoy in association with others. Just like, I'll give an example. You imagine a very nice feast. What do you all like to eat? Dosai, idiapam, payasam, all these different things. So if there's a very nice feast, if you eat it by yourself, you won't enjoy very much actually. Someone might think, oh, I'll take it all, I'll eat it all by myself. I won't show anybody. But actually, if there are many people all taking together very joyfully, then it becomes more enjoyable. If you eat by yourself, however nice it tastes, there's not the same enjoyment. Even, you see, if you watch some... I'm not doing, but I think you know I'm not doing. But if you're watching some... Uh, TV program, maybe some comedy or something like that. But if there are other people sitting with you laughing, then you enjoy. If it's only yourself, you want... Or if there's some joke, if you share it with others, it becomes more funny. So like that same thing, Krishna it shares enjoyment. That is sharing rasa, exchange of rasa. This we see Prahalad was completely dependent on the Lord, with complete faith and trust. 
usually the young boys, Prahlad is only five years old, usually they have full faith and trust in their parents. To the child, the, the, the parents, they seem almost like God because you're totally dependent upon the, the child is totally dependent and it seems the, the father, he see whatever questions he can answer and they, they can do so many wonderful things. He's a very important person. When you grow up, you find out that, well, you know, after all, my, my parents are just ordinary people. But when you're a young child, you're totally dependent. But Prahlad wasn't like that. A five-year-old boy, he didn't care a fig for his father. He didn't care at all. Because Prahlad, even in the young age, was fully devoted to Krishna. Sometimes people ask, well, what about, why are you saying Krishna? Because Krishna only came after Rama. There was no Krishna at that time. Krishna only came later. But in the teachings of Prahlad Maharaj, he, he, he says, Matiya na Krishna paratasvato va. He is talking about those who don't have an inclination towards Krishna. Prahlad Maharaj is also described in the Bhagavatam, he is described as Krishna Graha. Sometimes we hear someone is Graha Grasta. Do you say this in your language? Graha Grasta. Do you say that? It means if someone's under the influence of some star, maybe someone's crazy or they have a lot of bad luck, you say Graha Grasta. So Prahlad Maharaj, he was described as Krishna Graha. He was under the influence of Krishna. He was like a person haunted by a ghost. but in a good way. That means he appeared to be like a madman because he was all the time thinking of Krishna even though he was only five years old. Now this is very interesting. You'll find that Prahlad Maharaj he speaks very high philosophy. This teachings of Prahlad Maharaj very important philosophy. Prabhupada made one book Transcendental Teachings of Prahlad Maharaj if you study the teachings of Prahlad, you'll find so much important philosophy about how the Supreme Lord is the cause of the universe, how He is the ultimate hand in everything, how we are fully dependent upon Him. There are so many different teachings of Prahlad. Now how could it be a five-year-old boy could teach such things? Even the Sanskrit language you find that he's using, how can you know at age five? This proves that self-realization is not dependent upon age. Sometimes people think, well, if someone is very old, he must be a very great sadhu, just because he's old. That's not true. One time, someone came to Prabhupada in London, and they said, well, I see uh, all your followers, they're very young. Because at that age, almost all the followers of Prabhupada are very young. So he said, well, don't you think if they're very young, they can't be very wise? Usually old people should be wise. They can't be spiritually realized if they're young. So Prabhupada said, no, no, no such thing. If you have transcendental knowledge... You may be physically young, but you are wise. But then if you're old and you don't have transcendental knowledge, then you're foolish. You can be a young wise man, or you can be an old fool. It doesn't depend, because we are Atma, we are neither young nor old. And this knowledge of the Atma, that, that is not dependent upon age factor. That you see, sometimes we think that someone who is older, they must be more wise, but not necessarily. If people go their whole life watching cricket, going to movies, 
reading Cine Blitz and Spot Star, you're not going to get what you can live to be 120. But if you pass your life like that, you'll, you'll simply grow up to be an old fool because you're not cultivating wisdom. You're cultivating nonsense. Whereas even someone relatively young, if they cultivate transcendental knowledge, they become spiritually advanced. You see these young boys here, how old are you? Sulit, what is your age? Twelve. See, now there are many people going on all these buses and auto rickshaws, his father's age, they'll be 25, 30 years old, 35, 40. This boy is more spiritually advanced because when Krishna comes, oh, bow down. May or may not know so much, may probably know more, must be knowing more philosophy. If you are, who is God? Who is God? Can you say? Krishna, you see? So more spiritually advanced than so many people. They're not even thinking such things. They're thinking, God, yeah, I know God, I go once. You see, so many people, they go to Balaji, they don't even know he's Vishnu. Do you know that? They think he's another God. They think there's Murugan and Vishnu and Krishna and Srinivas. They don't even know he's Vishnu. Do you know that? Sometimes people ask me, there's so many different gods. See Vishnu and Murugan and, and Shankar and Srinivas. They think he's different. They have no idea. No knowledge whatsoever. So, even in young age, if you are, if you are self-realized, everything can be revealed to you. The example is that Pallad Maharaj. Here, Krishna says, Prahladas Chasvi Daityanam. Among the Daityas, I am represented as Prahlad. Now, Daitya, generally we take that to mean demons. Some people say that Germany, the name for Germany is Deutschland. In Deutschsprachen, in German language, if you want to say Germany, you have to say Deutschland. So some people say that, that Deutsch, that comes from Daitya. They're actually quite very materialistic people. I think Prabhupada said, he said they're the most materialistic people in the world, Germans. So it may be, but anyway, the point that Daitya, generally we take that to mean demon. Daitya, Dhanava, Rakshasa. But even someone born in such a family, they may also be devotee. Daitya literally means descendant of Diti. Dhanava is, means descendant of Danu, who was another wife of Kashyapa Muni. Because you see, Kashyapa Muni is the father of the Daityas, beginning with Hiranyakashipu and Hiranyaksha. He's also the father of Bhagavan, Vamandev, Vayaditi, the Vamandev's cousin, Hiranyaksha Hiranyakashipu. He killed him. Cousin brother. Because they're Daitya. So Daitya generally that means demon, but literally it means born in a certain family. One may be born in a certain bad family, he may also be a great devotee. The example is that Prahlad Maharaj. Among the Rakshasas, there's also great devotee. Who? Who can think? Among the Daityas, Hiranyakashipu is very famous. Among the Rakshasas, who's famous? Ravana. So, the Raksha, born in Rakshasa family, but a great devotee, Vidishana. There may be so many examples. You see here, even we see, Vainatayas Chapakshinam, among the birds, I am Garuda. 
So Garuda, he's not a vegetarian. He's non-veg. He eats monkeys, snakes, fish. No, not monkeys. But the snakes, the fish. That's why you see when the uh, Indrajit he is finding the arrows that turned into snakes. So Ram and Lakshman became tied up. So Ram said, "Look, I can get I can get rid of these arrows. I'm God. I know how to do. But anyway, this is sent by the Brahmastra. So to honor Brahma, Brahmastra means the weapon of Brahma." So to honor that, we shall be tied up. So they were tied up by snakes. Then Garuda came and they all ran away. They're all afraid. He's non-veg. Not all the devotees are vegetarian. They may be non-veg also. In rare cases, Krishna says, Patrang pushpang phalang tai. You offer me these things. For Garuda he can do because he's, that's his body. He's an eagle body. The peacocks are also very dear to Krishna. They're also, they're not vegetarian. In spiritual world I don't know, but at least here they're eating all the bugs. So Prahlad, he's born in a family of demons. But he's a great devotee. Also we see Vitrasura. He was a demon. Actually he was the son of a brahmana, but he had the, he had the vritti, or the, uh, he was born with the special purpose of being enemy of Indra. So enemy of Indra, that in Bhagavatam, Lord Krishna says, Indrari vyakalam loke midayanti yuge yuge. Ete chaṁsa kala pungsa Krishna's to Bhagavan swayam Indrari vyakalam loke midayanti yuge yuge. He says that all the different demons they cause disturbance to Indra. Therefore, Krishna comes again and again to take the sides of the demigods. One name of Lord Vishnu is Daityari. He's an enemy of the Daityas, but he's not an enemy of Prahlad Maharaj. Generally, he's taking the side of the demigods. But in the case of Vitrasura, Vitrasura is fighting with Indra. Indra killed him, but Vitrasura was actually a great devotee. He went back to Godhead. So Indra is also a devotee. He didn't go back to Godhead. So you have to see. You can't judge only by external appearances. Pallad Maharaj, by external appearances, he should have been a great Asura. Because he's the son of Hiranyakashipu. Bali Maharaj also was the son of Virochana. Virochana was the son of, uh, son of Pralad, but he was also a great demon. Virochana was again a demon. And Bali Maharaj also appeared to be a great demon. Because he, he kicked, he threw Indra out of the heavenly planets. But then, when the test came, it was seen he was a great devotee. So you can't judge on external appearance only. You have to see what is someone's actual attitude. What are they doing? What are they thinking? That's why Shastra is there. We have to judge very carefully according to characteristics. That's what I'm saying, that someone may think, or oh, someone is very old, he must be a greater devotee. It's not necessarily true. Someone may be very old and uh, still have many attachments, or someone may be very young and very advanced. So you have to see by the symptom. What are the actual symptoms of a devotee? Pallad Maharaj was... Uh, born in a family of demons, but he had all the symptoms of a great devotee. So much so that the Supreme Lord appeared for his sake. 
This we shall discuss more tomorrow on the appearance day of Nrsimha Deva, great festival in the Vaishnav calendar. Hare Krishna. Is there any question? I, I can't hear anything. Well, there are different classes of demons. De- demon means, this demon is a, actually this is Prabhupada's translation of the word Asura. Asura literally means no sura, no wine. <laughs> when there is the churning of the ocean, so sura, not exactly wine, but that uh, heavenly beverage that came. So, different things came out. Some things the demigods took and some things the demons took. So when that sura came, the, the uh, demigods took it, therefore they're called sura. And those who didn't get it, they're called asura. But technically the explanation is that dvo bhuto sarge loke svin daiva asura evacha vishnu bhakta bhavet daiva asura stad viparyayaha There are two kinds of people in this world. One is a devotee of Vishnu. He is called Daiva, godly. And the opposite, they are called Asura or demoniac. So within the demoniac, there are different races, just like Rakshasa, I was saying Rakshasa, Daitya, Dhanava, the Yakshas are mostly also like that. But it may be that that's a general classification. Just like I was saying, Rakshasas, generally they're demoniac. But then you find Vibhishana, he was also godly. There was also among the Rakshasis who were tormenting Sita, there was also one Trijota who was sympathetic to Sita and helped her. So it's not necessarily that all people born in these races are bad. Some of them are good devotees. Rakshasa, that generally means who eats men. That's the character, the the man-eater. I really can't hear anything. I can hear some, but I can't... It's very... uh, Certain incarnations we're observing the appearance. Well, we observe Brahman Dwadashi, we observe Balaram Purnima, Kalki we don't observe. The, the, uh, there are certain incarnations that are considered more prominent and important. Prabhupada discusses this. So, their days we're observing more. We'll find Brahman Dev is discussed extensively in Bhagavatam, Nushinga Dev is discussed extensively. Parashuram is Shaktyavai, she's not Purna Avatar. Buddha is also not Purna Avatar. He's not Vishnu directly. Well, definitely Jan Mashtami. Jan Mashtami, very important. Ram Nomi, Ram Navami. This we're also celebrating. Rishingadev is very Im- important incarnation because he's Bhakti Vignavinashana. He destroys obstacles on the path of devotion. I, I can't hear what is being said. Who? Pralad, yes. Yes. Chitraketu. I heard something, but I can't, I mean, it's... Making some point about getting association with devotee? Something like that. <laughs> 